let's have a look at this question and the question is with Bayer's reagent ethene forms very simple question let me first tell you what Bayer's reagent is so Bayer's reagent is the dilute alkaline cold KMnO4 solution all right so what I'm saying is dilute alkaline cold KMnO4 solution now always remember KMnO4 is an oxidizing agent all right but in the cold uh, you can say alkaline and dilute conditions it serves as a little weak oxidizing agent all right basically little weak with respect to its acidic or hot and concentrated solution i'm talking about all right so now here you can see what it will do is if ethene is made to react with uh, this cold alkaline uh, dilute kmno4 solution or you can say bears reagent then what will happen is Yes, I'm telling you a trick here to solve this particular uh, question. Why? Because the mechanism is not that required. All right. So what you have to simply do is break this pi bond, add one OH and one OH to both the carbons. All right. So you have to just break the CC pi bond and you have to add one OH group to both the carbons. All right. So by doing so, what you are getting is ethane. One, two, three, diol. Isn't it? That means what you are getting is given in option A that is ethane 1 to diol. So option A has to be the answer. And yes, option B says oxalic acid. This is not the right answer. We know that. Option C is formic acid. Again, not correct. And option D is none of the above. Again, not possible. So clearly you can see only option A is the answer to this question. Let's have a look at this question. The question is anti Markonikov's rule is applicable for addition of very basic question. And you can see we have uh, four options given here option A, B, C and D and option D is all of these. So let us understand uh, which one is the right answer. So now first of all what you have to understand is anti Markonikov's rule is applicable to the addition of HBr only. Why? Because if you see when uh, these uh, you can say HX is added to the alkene in the presence of peroxide uh, then uh, if the HX is HBr in such case the Kharash effect or you can say the peroxide effect takes place wherein the reaction proceeds by a free radical addition mechanism which comprises of three steps one is uh, the first one is initiation the second one is propagation and the third one is termination now in the propagation step basically if you see if these uh, you can say series of reactions that uh, takes place in the propagation step if these reactions are exothermic then only the propagation step will take place uh, you can say towards the forward side if it comes out to be endothermic or you can say if any of the reaction comes out to be endothermic then the reaction becomes reversible and propagation will not take place and there will be no chain in uh, you can say extension in such case all right so now you can see in case of hcl if you see the first propagation step the first propagation step and the second propagation step we have to basically look for. Let me tell you uh, what happens in the first propagation step. So I'm assuming an alkene CH3 CH double bond CH2. So now in the first propagation step uh, what happens is this is made to react with X radical. All right. And now this pi bond breaks as radical. All right. This pi bond not breaks as radical. You can say this pi bond undergoes homolytic bond fusion. Thereby what you will get is CH3. CH, CH2, X and this particular radical intermediate is what is obtained in the first step of propagation. Now the question is uh, why X is attaching to this terminal carbon is because uh, by doing so the uh, you can say radical intermediate that you are left with is more stable due to more number of uh, hyper conjugating structures. All right. So now you can see uh, this is what takes place in the first step and in the second step what happens is this CH3 CH, CH2X is further reacted with HX. All right, it reacts with HX. There occurs homolytic bond fusion of this HX. And what you will get is CH3, CH2, CH2X plus X radical. All right. So this is the second step. Now uh, you can see whether anti Markonikov's rule is applicable or not depends upon whether the first step and the second step are exothermic or endothermic. If uh, you can say both the steps are exothermic, then definitely anti Markonikov rule will be applicable. If any one of these two is endothermic, then it is not applicable. So now you can see in case of HCl, the first step if we talk about is exothermic 
वेर एज द सेकेंड वन इज एंडोथर्मिक वाई बिकॉज एच सी एल बॉन्ड स्ट्रेंथ इज वेरी हाई सो ब्रेकिंग ऑफ दिस एच सी एल बॉन्ड विल रिक्वायर एनर्जी दैट नीड्स टू बी सप्लाइड फ्रॉम आउटसाइड एंड हेंस इट बिकम्स एंडोथर्मिक ऑल राइट नाउ मूविंग टू एच बी आर यू कैन सी इन दिस केस बोथ द स्टेप्स आर एक्सोथर्मिक क्लियर नाउ मूविंग टू एच आई इन केस ऑफ एच आई द फर्स्ट स्टेप इज एंडोथर्मिक वेर एज द सेकेंड वन इज एक्सोथर्मिक ऑल राइट This clearly tells you that only in case of option B, the anti-Markovnikov's rule is applicable. All right, and in case of option A and C, it is not applicable. So this option A, C, as well as D cannot be the right answer. Hence, the only right answer to this question is option B. Let's have a look at this question. The question is addition of cold concentrated H2SO4 with alkene is an example of very basic question. Let us see how to answer. So let's assume we have an alkene CH three CH double bond CH two. Now it is made to react with cold concentrated H two SO four. Now what happens in this case is this H two SO four being an acid dissociates into H plus and H S O four minus. All right. Now in the next step, what happens is, or uh, you can say, now what happens is. these pi bonds are polarized towards the h plus or you can say h plus polarize these pi electron clouds towards it thereby leading to breakdown of this pi bond all right so let's assume this pi bond breaks in towards the right side carbon all right now what happens due to this uh, shifting of pi cloud towards the right carbon uh, the electron density on this right carbon will increase and thereby uh, h plus will immediately attack on it all right so now you can see what you will get is ch3 CH CH three. All right. Now, how come it becomes CH three? Because this H plus is attacking on this carbon. Clear? And therefore, what you will get is a carbocation intermediate. Clear? Now, one important thing to understand here is, since hydrogen is carrying a positive charge here, it is deprived of electrons, and hence it will act as electrophile. Clear? So the first attack here is made by the electrophile, and hence this reaction is called as electrophilic. and now whether it is called as addition or substitution let's figure out now what happens next is you can see this is the carbocation that we are getting now this negative part will attack on this uh, positive charged carbon thereby what we will get is ch3 ch ch3 and here we get uh, this particular thing uh, s just a minute yes uh, s o4 h all right this is what we will get on this carbon clear so now clearly you can see in this particular reaction nothing is leaving from the reactant in fact h2so4 is getting added to this particular reactant so definitely this is an addition reaction and since electrophile is making the first attack it is called as electrophilic addition reaction so now let's match with the options you can see in option a it says electrophilic substitution not right in option b it says nucleophilic substitution not right in option c it says electrophilic addition reaction absolutely correct and in option d it says nucleophilic addition reaction not correct so that means the only answer to this question is option c let's have a look at this question in this question we have to find out the gas that is produced by reaction of calcium carbide with water very basic question let us see how to answer so first of all you have to write down the reaction that takes place when calcium carbide is made to react with water so when cac2 is made to react with water what do you get is uh, you will get caoh whole twice that is calcium hydroxide along with formation of c2h2 now this c2h2 is acetylene all right and yes this is the one that is obtained in the gaseous form all right so here we can say that uh, the gaseous product all right of this particular reaction is acetylene which is option a and yes option b c and d are not right so only option a is the right answer to this question let's have a look at this question in this question we have to write down the correct order of ch bond length in these three molecules that is c3 uh, ch3 ch3 ch2 double bond ch2 and ch triple bond ch let's find out so first of all let me tell you the ch bond length ch bond length is inversely proportional to the percentage s character of carbon 
All right. In this case, this CH bond length is inversely proportional to the percentage as character of carbon. And in order to calculate percentage as character, first we have to find out the hybridization of the carbon atom. So let us do this. So as you can see, in case of CH three CH three, this carbon is here bonded to four different atoms or groups through four sigma bonds. All right. As you can see here, three sigma bonds with hydrogen atom and one with the carbon atom. And plus, there is no lone pair on the carbon, so the hybridization for this carbon will be sp3. Same for the other carbon as well. Clear? This is also sp3. Now you can see, in case of sp3, out of the four, uh, you can say orbitals that participate in the mixing, one is s and three are p. So you can see, out of a total of four, one is s. So one by four, that means the percentage s character is twenty five percent. Clear? Yes. So now moving to the next molecule, which is CH two double bond CH two. Now in this case, if you see this particular carbon atom is forming three sigma bonds and it has no lone pair on it, which means the hybridization is sp two. Same for this carbon as well. And now you can see in case of sp two out of three orbitals participating in mixing, one is s. So the percentage s character will be thirty three point three three percent. And moving to the last case, which is CH triple bond CH, here you can see this carbon is forming two sigma bonds. All right, and uh, it carries no lone pairs, so the hybridization will be sp. Same for this as well. And this means out of two orbitals participating in mixing, one is s, which means a fifty percent s character. Now, since we know the carbon hydrogen bond length is inversely proportional to the percentage s character of carbon, we can say that uh, the least bond length. All right, will be for the one uh, wherein the percentage s character is maximum. So this means uh, the CH bond length in case of CH triple bond CH will be the least one, followed by CH two double bond CH two, and the maximum CH bond length will be observed in case of CH three CH three. Clear? Let's now match with the options. So now you can see in case of option A. It says CH three in case of CH three CH three the CH bond length is minimum, which is not right. So this is not the answer. In case of option B, it says CH two double bond CH two has the minimum bond length. Again, not correct. So is not the answer. Option C says CH triple bond CH has the minimum bond uh, length of CH bond, followed by CH two double bond CH two, and then the maximum is in case of CH three CH three, which is exactly the right order. And hence, option C is the answer to this question.